It's now down to the wire, the final stretch before the September 3 general election and a battle for key constituencies that could prove to be the decider. Opinion polls have given the advantage of at least three of these seats to the Jamaica Labour Party, but is this security? Hello and thank you for joining us for Eye on the Polls, a part of the Gleaners Jamaica Votes series. I'm Damian Mitchell. Today, the battleground seats, how will they swing and will the political debates play a role? To help us assess these issues, we're joined by Star Editor and Jamaica Votes Coordinator Darren Luton, Attorney at Law and PNP member as well as a former Senator Delano Franklin, and businessman and JLP Area 3 Council Chairman Michael Stern. Gentlemen, let's start then at the beginning. At the start of the last parliamentary term, the PNP had 31 seats, the JLP had 32. During the course of the term, however, there were two by-elections, St. Mary Southeastern and Portland Eastern. The PNP lost both to the Jamaica Labour Party. The result, a change in the balance of power. So the parliamentary term ended with the JLP having 34 seats to the PNP's 29. Darren, what for you, therefore, are the seats to watch come September 3? Well, uh, thanks, Damien. Uh, if you're talking about watching from the perspective of the PNP forming the next government, it is the case that they have to look back to Southeast St. Mary. They have to look to see what can happen for them in Southeast Clarendon, North Central Clarendon. Maybe they can look at Eastern Hanover, the two seats in St. James, that West Central and Central St. James. So those are some key seats for them to watch. Um, the JLP, in terms of consolidating what they had there, there is, a Saint, there is South St. James, obviously, in play. There are South East uh, St. Catherine, that's also in play. So there are quite a few seats out there. About, if you look at um, the numbers, there are about 18 seats that were won with a margin of 1,000 or less votes. Yes? Um, 11 of those seats, I think, are under 500. The JLP having seven of those. So in if you think about vulnerability, the JLP, in terms of numbers, would fall there. But in terms of where the momentum is, that's when um, a seat to watch maybe move, uh, has moved over into a comfortable zone as the polls done on this commission, um, done on done this poll, commissioned by Glenna this week, uh, uh, has shown, for example, in Eastern St. Andrew, where it seems that uh, Venetia Phillips, who should have um, been doing a bit more, we, we were thinking on the ground. She seems to be lagging behind Favor uh, Williams in that seat. So if you're looking at seats to watch, the momentum appears to be, be um, the PNP not following through on that behind on the eight ball now um, with the JLP in the ascendancy. Well, hold that point, Darren. We're going to come back to some of the seats for the JLP, which are now under consideration. But Delana Franklin, the PNP president, Dr. Peter Phillips, has predicted that his party will sweep 40 seats, paving the way for him to become Jamaica's 10th prime minister. What do you make of this sort of a projection? The, the objective of the People's National Party is to hold the 29 seats which we currently have. We do know that there will be some serious challenges in some of those seats. And to add to that, if we are to get up to Dr. Peter Phillips' number, we're talking about an additional 11, which will take us up to 40. But as you know, what we do need to take us across the line is just three additional seats that will take us up to, to 32. So I think the projection is on target. And I want to just discuss very briefly and quickly what was raised by Sir Luton a short while ago in relation to polls. I am looking at the current polls in the context of polling in 2016. I remember clearly most of the polls at that time predicting that the People's National Party would win. And I also remember the Gleaner itself doing a seat by seat count. And at the end of the day, it ended with the Jamaica Labour Party being the victorious party. I, I have that at my fingertips. The turnout was completely different. Uh, in the that 2011 election because most of the polls predicted. Now, I am not a person 
who criticize polling data. I respect pollsters. I respect the data. But when the polls, the, the current polls, the Don Anderson poll and the other poll, that major poll, which was done from the end of July to early August, which has a split of 16%, PNP and JLP. That poll was done before the elections had been called. And the momentum from that time to now, I would say, particularly with the debates last night, has in fact cut significantly into that 16%. Well, hold and that point. We're coming, to some of those issues. We're coming to some of those issues, uh, Delana Franklin, in respect of what the PNP has been seeking to put to the voters. But let's go to Michael Stern before that. He is the JLP yes. Area Council 3 chairman. He has responsibility to deliver 14 seats in Clarendon, St. Anne, and Manchester in the upcoming September 3 elections. He now has six. How will you, Michael Stern, deliver 14 seats? Let me just say thank you, Damian, and thank everyone for being on the program with us. Um, let me just say that the Jamaica Labour Party, right, is in a situation where we are really poised to take home at least nine to ten seats in our year of council. It's the first time we have been, been so poised. Um, and it, that would be a, a major gain for us in our era. Well, era hold on. Tell us those nine to ten seats you're thinking of. You now have six. Um, well, I'm, I'm thinking about Northwest St. Anne, right? So you're going to unseat Dayton Campbell? Yes. Yes. And I'll be taking Northwest Clarendon. You're going and to send home Richard as taking, Yes. And we're going to be taking also, right, the seat in Northern Clarendon. So you're sending right. home Horace Daly also? Yes. And I'm saying that that's a nine right there, right? But there's a possibility. There's a possibility that there's a dark horse in Manchester with Rhoda Crawford, right? And I believe that Mr. Bunting will find himself in the same hole he found himself with Danville Walker, where he's going to have to pull out all stops, right? There are three contenders in Manchester Central. There is Rohan Chung, the independent candidate. There is Peter Bunting, and you have Rhoda Crawford. What gives you the edge in Manchester Central? What gives me the edge is the fact that the Belfield Division, which is always, always the, the rock-solid PMP area, that John Jr. more or less would carry majority of the vote to cover the, the um, other areas, is more or less dissatisfied with the representation they have been getting from the Member of Parliament and is seeking change. And the, because of the, the Jamaica Labour Party um, um, liking, right, in terms of many of the projects that we've been running in central Jamaica and agro processing and others, the farmers and others have been looking keenly to the JLP, right, more, more so now than ever, right, for, for the future. Delano Franklin, of, what do you make of this project, projection or pronouncement, should I say? I missed a little bit of what he said. And I'm not going to be like his representative in the debate who said that she never heard the question, but she answered it nevertheless. <laughs> I'm going to respond Mr. to Franklin, what I heard. essentially he said that the JLP will be taking three additional seats to the six it now has in the Area Council 3. Those seats okay, that's the part Clarendon, Northern, Clarendon Northwestern and St. Anne Northwestern. So Dayton Campbell, Richard Azan, and Horace Daly will be going home, and there is a possibility that Rhoda Crawford will unseat Peter Bunting. How does that sit with you? Well, I say this, in relation to Central Manchester, um, you have two contenders and a participant. The Peter Bunting will retain that seat. This is the fourth term um, for him. Every election, it is predicted by the Jamaica Labour Party that Peter Bunting will, will lose that seat. He will take home that seat. In relation to um, Northwestern Clarendon, which Mr. Stern knows very well, in the 2016 election, Mr. Stern, Stern said that he would have won that particular constituency. He was wrongly beaten by Richard Hassan. And Richard Hassan will once again take home that constituency by beating Philip Henriquez. In relation to Dayton Campbell. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, in relation to Dayton Campbell, yes, it will be a stiff fight, but I expect Dayton to come through in that particular constituency because the Jamaica Labour Party, um, having thrown out Mr. Reed, the former Minister of Education, danced around for a long period of time before it was able to settle on a candidate. And Dayton has been on the ground. He has never left the ground. It has always been a very difficult seat for the People's National Party, but I expect Dayton Campbell to take it home. So I don't know which lens my good friend Michael Stern is looking through, but those three seats will be retained by the People's National Party. Um, Darren so, Luton, let so me bring you in here. What do you make of these pronouncements and counter-pronouncements? It's interesting. It's not the first time that I'm hearing um, the, the, the seats that have been targeted. We know the Northern Clarendon, the Dayton Northwest, St. Anne are, are seats that are really um, intend, we expect that they're going to be very close. Um, not too sure if it's going to be that close in Northwest Clarendon. Um, the Central Manchester is always one that appears as if it's going to be close. And well, the first run of Bunting in 07, when it um, prevailed by 115. Remember, yeah. with the Jamaica Labour Party in the last election, it still got home by in excess of a thousand votes. Um, it would be interesting, though, to see whether it is that the bunting popularity um, nationally um, translate to votes on the ground in terms of retention of him as Member of Parliament. Going into the fourth term for any Member of Parliament, anti-incumbency can sit in um, with anti-incumbency with the popularity of the JLP leader, Andrew Holness. I think he could be in trouble, but I'm not too certain if Rhoda or the JLP machinery in Central is strong enough to unseat him. Stick with that because Delano Franklin believes that last night's performance in the political debate featuring Andrew Holness, the leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, and Peter Phillips, the president of the People's National Party, will have a role to play in decision come September 3. Do you support this view? I'm, I'm not certain whether to attach a lot of, uh, of weight to political um, debate in terms of the impact on voting. Um, I think that the things to look for in terms of on voting day, this, this September 3 really, is the extent to which um, COVID will play. Who yes. will be going out to vote? Who will be prepared to stand in line, um, observe social distancing, and perhaps be inconvenienced longer? Um, the extent to which older voters will be allowed to leave their homes by their children or runners will be able to go and pick up older voters. I think that play more than um, national debates. I think you, you can get hurt, but I don't think you win votes in national debates. So that, take that, on that then, Michael Stern, how is the JLP preparing, preparing for the possible COVID impact and the possibility of rain come September 3? Right, so, so therefore all, we have never been having a problem with rain, but it compli what complicates matter is COVID. Right situation, and you have to assure the voters, which you have to do, bring in the workers and let them assure the voters that they, they will be going into motor vehicles or, or they'll be carried safely to the polling station and back. And when they reach a polling station, they have to ensure that many of them get masks and they are, they, are, they, are, they are treated carefully going into the pool, especially the older people going into the polling station they must be given sanitization for their hands and make sure that when they go into the vehicle, the vehicles are, are cleansed or are sanitized before they go in. And when they reach home and, and coming back to pick up anyone else, they have to do the same. And all of these materials will be supplied to all these cars and, and also to, to, the, to the workers who, who may be holding um, the, the, the voters. So the voters can assure that the Jamaica Labour Party will ensure their safety um, on, on election day. And we, we intend to educate all our workers on how they, they, they handle this matter. But the rain was never you move ever on to the next point, though. We, put, we always, yeah, go ahead. Let me ask you before you move on to the next point. Are you picking up any bounds from the political debate as cited by Delano, Delano Franklin for the... You know, you know what I see? Many people... Like on my, my thing, everybody has given the, the Prime Minister the edge, right? But, um, and everybody, if you look on the, um, the, the, the other side, meaning PMP side, you'll see all of them on that side trying to give the edge or call it even, right? Let, let me say this. Everybody want to get out their points and they all are vetted 
to get out their points. And I think that our leader got out his point last night very well, right? And I think that the three debates, the three debates, the Jamaica Labour Party have done very well. And I think that, that, that will, whatever springboard you get from debate will, will, uh, will assist us. But let me tell you something. Everything is about the ground. Everything now is about the ground and who have the organization to pull out the vote and who is equipped to, to ensure um, and have the capacity to do it. It is um, a lot of the voters' minds are made up, right? Maybe 90% of the voters' minds are made up already. Well, let's come back to Delano Franklin, because one of the issues that the People's National Party has to contend with, Delano, is that matter of the lack of coherence and clarity concerning the only golden carrot, that of the money to be paid to people's light bills and their water bills. Isn't that, isn't not that an issue for the PNP just now? The fact that there is interest, but the party has not clearly identified and clearly communicated to people how this will be applied. The party leader in the debate last night was very precise and very clear as to how the wealthy manifesto will in fact be funded. The party leader said very clearly that it will cost 50 billion Jamaican dollars that a portion of that will come from the consolidated fund and the other portion will come from the contingency arrangements which have been made. I think I need to put it in context uh, very, very quickly. It's, it's, it's very, very clear in terms of how it will be funded. I want to respond to, I want to, respond to two additional points though. Firstly, we have to be consistent when we quote polls. We can't be quoting the polls now to say that the Jamaica Labour Party is ahead because it is being said by pollsters. And when we come to the debates, we dismiss what the pollsters say. The pollsters have found that 35% of Jamaican voters make up their mind to vote one way or the other after a national debate. I believe that the debate last night has helped and will help a significant number of persons to decide which of the two parties to vote for. I am absolutely glad that Michael Stern said that the Prime Minister was on the edge last night. He was so closely to the edge that he got numbers mixed up. The Jamaica Labour Party is promising and has said I need to that they, that have built, they have built 22,000 houses. If you go to the National Housing Trust um, figures, which came out in 2019, it is under 8,000. If you go to PIOJ, which also includes houses outside of the National Housing Trust, it is under 9,000. 22,000 is far-fetched unless those houses disappeared as the grass disappeared. Michael Stern? Say, yes, I'm here. Sorry, um, before Michael, I, want to... I just want to make... Uh, uh, before, before Michael, can yeah. I just make a point? Before, I need to correct okay. something you have said. Um... Frankly, I well, hold, hold, hold that point, Michael. Correct I something that I, su okay, I support. Ahead. I support the points made by Michael in relation to COVID-19. This is the first time Jamaica is having a national election in a pandemic. We expect, and the country expects, based on what has been advanced by the professionals, that the numbers will spike. It therefore means that the political parties, including the People's National Party, and all the representatives that we have on the ground must ensure that our supporters and people who will be coming out to vote on the third, that they adhere to all of the protocols. Critical will, critical will be safety. And finally, in the 2016 election, the turnout was 48%. I am anticipating that the turnout will be low in this election did you say the, low or lower? Lower, much lower, because of COVID-19. It therefore will be a battle for the base in terms of the political parties being able to get out their supporters. So I agree with him that from now to Thursday of, next, of this week, it will be a ground game grounded largely among those who support either of the two political parties. And that is where we'll be beating the Jamaica Labour Party.
Michael Stern, let me bring um, you in here. Anyway, let me just brush that point. aside. I just brush that aside because Mr. Mr. Franklin need to know at this point that every by-election, right, that we have taken part in since the general election, right, we have done better at the ground game. And a lot of the youngsters that are now in the field are young people who have learned. And Mr. Franklin knew his time when he was younger. He was in the field and he learned a lot and he, the energy, the energy that you know, these young people have and, and the, you know, a lot of the, the ground game tactics that they have learned from us in the by-elections, they will be very good in terms of helping us with this difficult time of, of, um, of, of turning out the vote. But let me just correct something. I want to correct something. Um, the NHT financial book or records or online have it published in 2000, from, from 2012, 2011, 2012, straight back to 2020 to 21, 20, 2021 year. All the starts are in the book, right? And, and let me just correct something that, that he has said. So these are housing starts, not houses delivered. The it's on, it's and, on, Michael, if I may, if I may, there's a big distinction between housing solutions, yes, I know. housing but completed, housing... and solutions. F follow me yeah, well. I have before, let, let me, I have it right before me here. Right before me, the NHT data. NHT data for 2016, 2017. How many completed houses? 1,451. For the years 2017 to 2018, how many completed? 1,866. For the period 2018 to 2019, how many completed? 2,298. Projections for 2019, 2020, 2,225. Total, 7,640. So when the Prime Minister says to the country that the NHT advised them that they had completed 22 houses, it is not true. 21? The Prime Minister can say that. It is not true. And if you go to Statin and look at 2019 data, page 14.5, Luton, you are a journalist. Both of you are journalists. Check it. Nine, look at it. 14.5, that page, because you know how they page it in, in half pages. Look at it. It is under 9,000 for finished houses in Jamaica. If the Jamaica Labour Party is saying, if the Jamaica Labour Party is saying housing starts, do you know that when you identify a particular area in Jamaica and you do the drawings and you put a tractor through it and you say, I'm going to build 24 units there, that's classified as housing start? It is not true to say that we have anyway, built 24. Houses. I'm running out of time, Not gentlemen, and I need you to move can't on. Have, you can't have 20, 24,000 or 25,000 starts from 2016 until now, right? And then you boil right down to 8,000 only finish. That is not true. Mr. Stern, right? I have to move true. on from this issue because I'm almost out of time. I have about two minutes left. Am I hearing you're saying that you are going to be having 38 <laughs> seats in the new parliament, Mr. Michael Stern? We're going to have more than that. Going to have a, up to 40. You're going to have more than 38. What's yes. your final count? 40. 40. And to you, Delana Franklin, what's the final count for the PNP? My final count is 32, and whatever we come with thereafter, we will take. Darren, how do you see it? I'm watching it as it unfolds. I, I, I know I've checked off what I consider the safe seats. Yes. Darren, don't go there again. Don't go there, there again. And those, and those are marginal seats. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's some safe seats remember there. Remember 2016. Yes, we remember 2016. And I, I, I tell you now, um, Delano, I was the only person perhaps in Jamaica who got 2016 correct, right down to the T. Yeah. All right? But one team. final thing before we go, gentlemen, and probably this is for the political representatives. What will be the message over the next three days heading into September 3? Delano, let's take you first. The message is that the People's National Party, as demonstrated by its leader, Dr. Peter Phillips, has the capacity, has the ability, because he has done it in the past, to be able to steer Jamaica 
through the looming crisis which exists after September the 3rd. Looming crisis brought on by COVID-19. Be safe, go out and vote. Vote for the party that put people at the center of its activities. Michael Stern? Yes, um, I, I am encouraging all voters to, to um, just follow the protocol and, um, and, and ask for your mask if you don't have it, or our party is going to provide some. Um, and we are asking you to go out and vote. Vote for performance and achievement. This Jamaica Labour Party have achieved a lot in the last four and a half years. And we, we, will, we, will, we will recover, right? COVID. Um, we recover and we will keep COVID under control, right? COVID. Uh, so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, have confidence in us that we'll offer the strong leadership going forward. And well, that's all the time we have for this program. Doreen Luton, the Gleaners uh, Jamaica Votes Coordinator and the Star Editor, would like to say thanks to Delano Franklin, PNP member and former senator, and also to Michael Stern, the chairman of the JLP Era Council 3. This has been Jamaica Votes. I'm Damian Mitchell. Thanks for watching.